I want to end this section with a remark about context, and then real quickly we'll look at the distance formula and how that plays out for circles and spheres. So context. If we write down the equation y equals 2, and we're working in R2, in 2 space, then y equals 2 is just a line. It's a line. But if I write down y equals 2, same equation, but I'm working in 3 space, then y equals 2 isn't just a line anymore. There is this sense that, yeah, there's the line y equals 2. That's the same line as before. But y equals 2, that equation, gives me an entire plane in 3 space. I don't know if you can kind of make that out, but I get this plane along y equals 2. So I can stretch any uh, z, anything in z that I want, anything in x that I want, I just keep the y coordinate fixed at 2. That gives me a plane and of course, I can think about this line as the intersection between the plane y equals 2 and then the plane z equals 0. When you intersect that plane with this plane, then you get this line. And you can think about that intersection line and this line being the same. So I don't want you to think there's no connection between these two things. Of course, they're very connected, but they're very fundamentally different. A line is not the same thing as a plane. And so the moral of the story is you have to pay attention to context. Where are you working? Are you working in two space or three space? And you know, that's a really great life principle. Uh, context actually matters in so many things, uh, and it certainly matters here as well. Okay, uh, you should recall the distance formula for two points. If, if I want to compute the distance between two points in two space, Maybe my first point is x1, y1, second point x2, y2. The distance between them is the radical of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. What is this formula? This is quite literally a triangle. It's just the Pythagorean theorem, and you're computing this side. So uh, that's all you're doing geometrically is just computing the hypotenuse. You have these, here's your point, here's your point. The difference in x's is this part. The difference in y's is that part and then you want to find this distance. So you just do the Pythagorean theorem, and you get this. That's really all that is, is the Pythagorean theorem. Fine. How do you find the distance between two points in three space? Well, you just apply the distance formula in two space in the right way. And when you do that, you come up with this formula. So here is a point in three space, a second point in three space. The distance between them is exactly what you think it should be. It's almost the same formula. You just tack on a z2 minus z1 squared at the end. So you'll need the distance formula to work out some of your homework problems. Last thing, recall that a circle in two space can be expressed as uh, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. If you look at the set of all points x comma y that lie on a circle of radius r centered around hk, then that's the equation. If you're unfamiliar with this, or if you've forgotten that, then YouTube and uh, watch another video somewhere else, or look it up, or whatever you need to do, because it's important that you know that formula. Hopefully you haven't forgotten it. I want you to realize, though, that circles are really just coming from the distance formula. Uh, if I took a radical of both sides, then what I'm getting is I'm getting uh, the distance from x, the point x, y to h, k is always r. So circles are just the set of all points that are equal distance from some center point h, comma, k. And you can do that uh, not just in two space, you can do that in three space. There's actually different ways you can define distance. It gets really interesting. But the point is simply this. A sphere in R3, I want us to think about is the set of all points that are the same distance, equidistance, from some fixed points, which we'll call the center. And I'm going to mark the center usually by h, k, and then l. And so the equation of a sphere, here's the thing that I want you to realize, is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared plus z minus l squared equals r squared. This gives me the equation of a sphere with radius r, not r squared, radius r, and center h, k, l. So for a quick example, uh, I don't know if we'll sketch it, but if I want to write down x minus 1 squared plus y squared plus z plus 3 squared equals 
two, then you should instantly recognize that the center of the sphere, well, first off, you should recognize this is a sphere, right? So know what it is. It's a sphere. Its center is one, zero, negative three, and its radius is r equals root two. And if I asked you to graph it, uh, I'm not looking for perfection by any means when you're graphing things by hand. Um, I, I'm not actually capable of graphing them perfectly myself, obviously, so I won't expect you to. Uh, but you're going to find the center, so we'll plot the center. So one on the x-axis, uh, zero on the y-axis, and then we want to go down, whoops, down negative three. So somewhere down here is the center. We're going out root two, so we're going to get this sphere that uh, looks something like that. So we'll end here. You've got some homework for 10.1, and the next video round we'll dive into 10.2.